Well, welcome everyone. Today we're looking at infections. And I want to think about systemic infections. Now, a systemic infection is an infection which means that you don't feel well because it's affecting all of the body, all of the systems of the body, it's systemic. The converse of that is a localised infection. So like if you have a red spot or a bit of a boil or a red eye or something like that, that would be a local infection. But a systemic infection is affecting all the body and you feel ill as a result of that. And this feeling of general illness and not feeling well is called general malaise. Just You just don't feel well, that's malaise. And very often we get achy with it. Now infections, whether they're viral or bacterial infections, can cause fever. And when I start getting an infection, I know I start to feel a bit, bit shaky. But then you can get full shivers, which is called a rigor. And that's your body trying to increase your temperature to give you a fever. So a fever is a characteristic of systemic infection, whether it's bacterial or viral, that the body temperature goes up. And this is good because it helps the body to fight the infection. Now, because we're producing more heat, that uses a lot of energy. So the heart rate has to increase as well to pump the blood around the body to the muscles to make the energy, to raise the body temperature up so we can optimise our immune system and make the environment very uncomfortable for these viruses or bacteria by making our bodies febrile or fevered. And of course, using energy also uses a lot of oxygen. So the breathing rate has to go up. So the respiratory rate will increase. So, so far we notice that we don't feel well, we're achy, we have a fever, our heart is going faster than normal and we're breathing faster than normal. All those things we will notice and they are indications of systemic infection. And if we test for the blood sugar level, we will find that will be increased because the body's alarm responses means the blood sugar level is increased. And again, that makes perfect sense because blood glucose, the sugar in the blood, <clears throat> that is essential for energy. That's where we make a lot of our instant energy from, is from sugar in the blood. So that's increased. So we can make more energy. So we can have an increased respiratory rate. So we can have an increased heart rate. So we can generate the fever. Altered mental status. You, you might not be thinking as, as well as you normally do. Now, older people especially can get a condition called delirium where they become confused. Personally, when I get ill, I just tend to become bad-tempered, I'm afraid. So you get alterations in your mental status. Again, that's a normal part of a systemic infection. Now, there can be localising features. So like if the, if the infection is in your bladder, then you will get a p possible pain when you're passing urine. If the infection is in your chest, then you can get a cough. You can get short of breath. If the infection is in your gastrointestinal tract, then you can get diarrhea and vomiting. So these are all features of infection. This is how we know we're ill. We don't feel well. We get a fever. We can become hot. We're achy. We don't want to do anything. We're tired. We go to bed. And if we examine ourselves or someone examines us, the heart rate is usually up the respiratory rate is up and the blood sugar is up. But all of these are part of the body's natural way of fighting and combating the infection. So they're all natural responses to the infection, but they're useful for us so that we can work out, we can diagnose, we can adjudicate if someone has an infection. So if I feel these features, I think, oh dear, I've got a bit of a bug, I've got a bit of infection. Or if I see these features in someone, I can say, well, we're dealing with an, inf an infectious condition here, um, a systemic condition. And the thing about these conditions of infections is they are spread from one person to another, usually. So these are also called transmissible diseases because they can spread from one individual to another. Now, next, we want to look at the consequences of infection. And we've already partly dealt with this, actually. So when someone's got infection... If it's a respiratory infection, they'll eventually get features which are specific to the lungs. Now, to begin with, when someone's first getting an infection, what happens is you tend to feel unwell, but you don't know which part of your body is unwell. You just have this general malaise. You think, oh, I don't feel well, and you maybe take yourself off to bed. And then it's only after that that the infection localises to part of the body, and you think, oh, I had a chest infection. Or, ooh, I was developing a urinary tract infection. You can realise that afterwards. When the infection localises to the particular part of the body where the infection has become systemic from. So, for example, with a respiratory infection, you can get dyspnea. Pnea means air. Dys means difficulty. Difficulty breathing. Rapid breathing, fighting for breath. 
feeling short of breath, depending on how bad the infection is. And if it's very bad, so for example, if you've got a severe pneumonia and there's infection right down in the lung tissue, it's a very dangerous infection, that can cause hypoxemia. Hypo is low, and, and this is the, the oxygen in the blood. Emia is in the blood. So eventually it can drop the amount of oxygen in the blood if you have a severe condition like pneumonia. Other respiratory infections, of course, are just upper respiratory infections, and we get a runny nose. These are called rhinoviruses very often that get into our nose, and they just cause the common cold. They, they can, we can feel quite debilitated with it you get very runny nose very uncomfortable and it can also make you feel systemically ill as well because the infection sort of spreads all around the body so with a bad cold you can actually feel quite unwell as well as having the localized features of a cold so upper or lower respiratory infections gastrointestinal infections again these can be upper or lower if they're affecting the upper part of the gastrointestinal tract the gut then that can cause vomiting and in the lower part, very often it causes diarrhoea. And of course, both of these are good because if you swallow toxic bacteria or viruses and you vomit them out, they are then out of the body. That's good. Or if you've got uh, infectious bacteria or viruses in your colon, in your large bowel, and you have diarrhoea, then that washes them all out of the body. So these are good natural flushing effects. They're, they're, they're consequences, but they, they, they are good. Of course, they can become problematic if you lose too much fluid or you lose too much salt or too much potassium. Then we might have to think about putting some back. But um, they, they are basically self-defense mechanisms. Now, urinary infections, you get dysuria, which is pain in passing urine. Often like you're passing boiling hot urine, very uncomfortable feeling. And if the urinary infection is bad, you can get pus and you can get blood in the urine as well. You can get an infection of the meninges, which is the covering of the brain and the spinal cord, meningitis, that can be very, very serious. And with there, that you might get a headache, you might get back pain, you might get photophobia, fear of the light. You don't like the light. And there's other features of that that go with the particular type of meningitis that you're suffering from. So for example, if it's a meningococcal meningitis, you can develop a rash. But it's important to remember that the rash is a later feature. We need to try and recognise these things early if we can. And another feature if infection is very severe is people can get shock. And in shock we get low blood pressure. Now, how do we treat infections? Well, first of all, everyone with an infection mustn't exercise. They have to rest. And they should keep warm. Because remember, when the body is warm, that's helping the body to fight the infection. The fever is part of the body's natural defence. Now, sometimes in children, we do need to lower the fever. Absolutely, we do. But really, I'm talking about adults at the moment. But even in children, it's true to say, older children, if they have a fever, that is helping their immune system. Sometimes we do like to bring the fever down in younger children, but that's a bit of a separate topic. So what I'm saying now mostly is applying to adults and older children and adolescents and young people and old people. So generally want to uh, keep warm. Uh, now we want to give a, a causal treatment. So if we know the cause of the infection, we want to treat that. So for example, if we think the infection is caused by bacteria, we can give antibiotics to kill the bacteria. But antibiotics will have no effect on viral infections. So for some viral infections, we can give antiviral drugs. Now many viral infections do not have antiviral drugs specifically to treat them. Only a few do. But if we have antiviral drugs, we can take those to treat them. But most viral infections, we don't have specific drugs for those. Generally, most people that have infections want to maintain plenty of fluid intake and make sure they're passing reasonably large amounts of urine. That's a generally good principle. Now, people are always saying, should I eat when I'm unwell? Well, when you're unwell, very often you get a feature called anorexia. Now, anorexia means not feeling hungry because you're ill loss of appetite and of course what you have to remember is when you're ill anorexia is completely normal it takes the body an awful lot of energy to break down the food that we eat before it can get the energy from that food so very often it's as if the body is saying look we're not very well now i don't want to spend all this energy digesting food we'll just use our reserves for a couple of days and for someone like me I've got a little bit of reserve there no problem at all. I can stop eating for a few days if I don't feel like it. No issue at all. So generally, I would say if you feel like eating, eat. 
If you don't feel like eating, don't eat. That's the general sort of rule of thumb. Your body tells you what it wants and your body will tell you when you are hungry and not. And, and you might have been like me where you've been a bit anorexic for a couple of days and then one morning you wake up and you think, oh, I could just eat a nice big breakfast. And of course, that's a sign that you're getting better because your, your body's ready to take on food again. Now, in hospitals, we give what's called supportive care. And this is supporting whatever the person's physiology is not doing very well for themselves. So, for example, we might give additional oxygen to maintain the oxygen in the blood. Or if they're not drinking properly, we might give intravenous fluids. And we always want to monitor urine output. So for adults, really, you want to be producing about 100 mils of urine per hour. So a 60 kilogram adult should be producing at least 30 mils of urine per hour. An 80 kilogram adult should be producing at least 40 mils of urine per hour and preferably a bit more than that as well. So drink enough to make sure you're producing, I would say for most people, 100 mils of urine an hour or, or more than that. Now people are always saying when a meal, what do I do? How can you help me? And, and the answer is very often you just have to wait till you start feeling better. The body will mount an immune response. Your body's antibodies will get rid of the virus, will get rid of the bacteria that's causing the infection in the vast majority of cases, and you'll feel better. But after a period of illness, which could last for a day, two days, a week, could even be longer, then very often the body's very tired after that, and you might need quite a long time to rest. And you might feel quite hungry after that as well. Remember last time I had an infection, I craved protein for a few days. I guess my body must have got a bit short of protein and I was craving protein. And to me, that was an indication that my body wanted protein. So I ate some more protein for a few days. And then the other thing it's very important to be aware of after infections, especially viral infections, you can feel quite depressed and have quite a low mood for a period of time. Now, again, that normally resolves on its own. But it's just something to be aware of after an infection that very often you don't bounce back straight away. You need a period of uh, convalescence. So that's just a few things about the basis of infection. Systemic infections that are, are involving the whole body. We know we've got it because we feel ill. We start to get a fever. We've got malaise. We might be shaky. We pile on the covers. We want to go to bed. We want to rest. It's very important that we do rest. It's very important that we allow other people to help us during that period of time while we wait to recover from this systemic I infection.